Welcome to the Iguana Chronicles, the podcast where we dive into the wild world of South Florida's invasive iguanas. I'm your host, Michael Keel, and each week we'll explore the fascinating history of these creatures, share thrilling tales from the front lines of iguana removal, and provide essential tips for homeowners and business dealing with these scaly invaders. Get ready for an adventure in wildlife management and education, right here on the Iguana Chronicles. What's up, everyone? Welcome to our first episode of the Iguana Chronicles podcast. My name is Mike. I'm also the owner of Humane Iguana Control, and I'm going to be the host of this podcast. You know, we're very excited to start this podcast, you know, to bring awareness and help uh, educate uh, listeners and viewers of, you know, the problems associated with iguanas. Um, you know, the iguanas have been here since the 1960s. They actually came through the pet trade. A lot of people have a misconception that iguanas have been here you know, forever, and that's not true. Iguanas arrived in the 1960s through the pet trade market. So pretty much uh, pet uh, shops would own these little iguanas and people would buy them when they're very small. And as they got bigger, you know, a lot of uh, pet owners would release these iguanas because they got tired of taking care of them. A lot of them also escaped from their enclosures. So when they get into the wild, you know, these, uh, the, the climate for these iguanas is very favorable. You know, they have all the food sources, the temperatures for them to thrive. So when these iguanas get released into the wild, let's say in canals, you know, these are perfect areas for them to, you know, multiply and then they start dispersing into, you know, random neighborhoods. And that's when you start seeing iguanas around your homes. You know, we have a lot of uh, clients tell us, hey, you know, I've been living here for like 40, 50 years and I've never seen an iguana and I'm starting to see them. So what's happening is these iguanas are starting to expand, you know, throughout different urban areas. You know, you can find iguanas anywhere from central uh, Florida all the way down to Key West. They've actually also been spotted, in, you know, rarely in, uh, in Pensacola, Florida and in Tallahassee. They don't do too good up there because the weather gets a lot colder than it does here in South Florida. So they tend to die off in those areas. Um, you know, there's also, um, it's also documented that, it, um, I think it was the 1970s, there's a, an exotic pet dealer that released, you know, 300 some iguanas into the wild. So imagine, you know, these 300 iguanas in the wild, they just started, you know, just multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. You have to remember that iguanas, they could lay up to 70 eggs a year. So they could pretty much just, you know, disperse and keep, you know, uh, intruding properties and becoming invas- invasive to certain areas. Um, there's actually three species of uh, invasive iguanas in South Florida that a lot of people are not aware of. There is the uh, common green iguana, there's a black spiny tail iguana, and the Mexican spiny tail iguana. The green iguana is the more typical one you'll see around streets, parks, canals, and around your homes. You know, the spiny tail iguanas are actually a little bit different. They're, their sizes are different and their colors are different. The spiny tail iguanas and the Mexican spiny tails, they're more like a brown tan color with some black, and their spikes are, are much shorter than the uh, regular green iguana. You know, these green iguanas, they can get massive in size. You know, these, these iguanas grow up to, you know, six feet in length and weigh up to 25 pounds. We've actually caught them that big. And, you know, the lifespan for these iguanas is about 15 years in the wild. So having these big iguanas around your property, you know, for some people it can be very scary. You know, imagine going to your pool and you'll see a six foot iguana and you're like, what, what do I do now, you know? <laughs> um, so one of the problems that iguanas have here in South Florida is that they impact our ecosystem, our native species and also our economy. You know, we're gonna talk more about that in a, on our next episode. But that's one of the main problems that we're facing here in South Florida. You know, we hear stories all the time of uh, iguanas, uh, you know, destroying landscaping and causing structural damages doing, due to their digging uh, abilities. You know, so removing iguanas from your property is, is highly recommended to avoid these, you know, these impacts to your home and, you know, business, schools, cemeteries. Um, a lot of, um, of homeowners uh, call us due to these iguanas um, just showing up, you know, getting on their roofs and, and defecating on their, around their pool. You know, this, this becomes a problem, you know. Um, you know, you have to constantly clean all these feces around your pool and it just becomes a, a big nuisance. You know, we've helped many people in South Florida, you know, um, like I mentioned before, homes, businesses, hotels, schools, even cemeteries. You know, cemeteries is more of a scary situation since they want us to like to dig their burrows to lay their eggs. You know, these uh, cemeteries, uh, they want us to well, dig burrows underneath plaques and, you know, again, that, that'll be in another episode. It's a very uh, scary situation. Um, so the reason we started this podcast, you know, is to, you know, share our, our, our wild stories of everything, you know, we've done in the last, you know, five, six years that we've been in business, share the wild stories that we've encountered. You know, I mean, who does want to hear about iguanas in, in homes and toilets and roofs? You know, a lot of a lot of residents when they call us, you know, at any time of the day, because we're open 24 hours, they'll call us. I want to call in the morning. Hey, I just found a new one in my bedroom. I need to get it out right now. So you can just imagine, you know, you're walking into your bedroom and you find a new one inside of your in, on top of your bed. You know, it's, it's it's a scary situation. You know, we're gonna also explain how you want to get into your homes, how they end up in your toilets, 
and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. You know, a lot of people think, yeah, I'll just grab myself and take them outside. You know, you shouldn't do that if you don't have the experience, you know, of handling iguanas. Remember, iguanas have very sharp teeth and sharp claws. And their tails like to, you know, they, use, they like to use their tails to, you know, defend themselves. So they'll do a 30 mile an hour uh, whip. That's how fast they go with their tails. So we're going to be sharing all that knowledgeable information uh, to all our viewers and uh, um, the ones that can see the podcast. You can also listen in. Um, so since um, around 2021, the FWC classified iguanas as a prohibited species. So from 2021 moving forward, you can't own iguanas. Um, I think it was July 28th. Um, you could keep the iguana if you had them prior to 2000, uh, 2000, sorry, July 28th, um, but you had to chip the iguana. You know, this, this was uh, back in um, 2021. Sorry about that. So if you do have iguanas, you know, prior to that date and you do have them chipped, you know, it's very important, you know, to you know, take care of it, you know, keep it, you know, locked up so they don't escape and they keep multiplying. You know, you have to remember that iguanas have very few predators, um, you know, especially in urban areas. You know, some of the predators you want to have are, are owls, you know, snakes, uh, gators, but you won't find these, these predators in, in urban areas. There's very few of them. Another one is raccoons. Raccoon actually likes to eat the iguanas alive. You know, we've seen it. We've seen raccoons go and grab iguanas and just pretty much eat them alive. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty freaky. So as you can imagine, you know, um, these iguanas running wild into, na into neighborhoods and, you know, um, urban, all these urban areas, they just begin to thrive and thrive and thrive. So they just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. A lot of people will tell us, that, you know, I just have one, it's fine, it's not doing anything. But then they see two, then three, and then four, and then the numbers just keep increasing and increasing. And once these iguanas overpopulate your property, you know, they just start damaging pretty much everything. Um, you know, you might find, you know, you want to feces on top of your roof. And what happens with that is when it washes off on the roof, you know, it ends up, you know, on your common areas where you walk around, around your pool, around playgrounds. You know, we're going to have a, a special episode just talking about the health risk, you know, associated with iguanas later on. Um, so that pretty much just covers everything about iguanas. You know, we want the first episode to be like an introduction, you know, to the iguanas and how they impact us. Uh, like I mentioned before, in our future episodes, we're going to have one episode to discuss, you know, each topic, you know, why they're invasive, how we control them, our methods, um, our wild stories, and what you could do for, to your home to help avoid, you know, these encounters with iguanas. Um, we're also going to be having some guests on our shows, you know, to talk more about their experiences and, and what they've been through and how they've been impacted, you know, by invasive iguanas. So, you know, we really hope you guys, uh, you know, subscribe to our channel and, and tune in for our next episodes. Um, we want to make sure that you guys are, are, are prepared, you know, for, for any one invasion on your property. A lot of people might say, you know, oh, this podcast is not for me because I don't have iguanas. You know, you don't have iguanas yet. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast, that people have been living in their homes for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years and you've never seen iguana and they're starting to see more iguanas around their homes. So if you listen to this podcast, you know, you can have a, a good mindset of what you could do to prepare for a situation if your home gets invaded by iguanas. So, you know, I really hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. You know, um, the next one should be dropping in about a week. So we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning into the episode of the Iguana Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed the deep dive into the challenges and triumphs of managing South Florida's iguana population. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review wherever you listen to this podcast. Stay informed and stay proactive. Together, we can make a difference. Until next time, keep an eye out for those iguanas.